So hello and welcome to this discussion with Creative First. In today's discussion, we will explore various aspects of how you can monetize, protect your intellectual property rights, uh, especially from a writer and director's perspective. So without much ado, let me invite our esteemed speakers today. Our first speaker, Jyoti Kapoor Das, is an Indian director and scriptwriter known for her work in Bollywood. She's a graduate from FTI Pune and has worked in independent and corporate roles at studios such as Viacom 18 and Big Synergy Productions. At Viacom 18, she was a creative, of, creative head for a number of box office hits like Bhag Milka Bhag, Queen, Gangs of Vasipur, which is actually a personal favorite of mine, uh, Kahani. And of course, she has won two Filmfare Awards for her short films. And I look forward to speaking with you today, Jyoti. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. Our uh, second speaker, Jamshed, is uh, an experienced counsel and founder of the International Legal Alliance. Um, he is extremely uh, skilled in, in, in the, you know, in the, uh, in the legal fraternity and he handles various types of litigation dealing with international law, media and entertainment law. He is a member of the Bombay Bar Association, the Intellectual Property Rights Practitioners Association, Maximum Lawyer Group, and Associate Member of the Canadian Bar Council. He is also an advisory member of the South Asian Fashion Week in Vancouver and the Vancouver International South Asian Film Festival. So, Jamshed, thank you so much for being our expert speaker today. Thank you. Uh, Jyoti, uh, to begin, tell us about your journey as a writer and director in this industry. Um, so it's it's basically every struggler, every hustler story. So, uh, you know, I, I was lucky enough to get admitted into the FTI. We studied, came out. I assisted directors like JP Datta and Abbas Mustan. And, you know, so my whole my whole orientation was anyway towards uh, commercial films. And um, then I took a break to have my babies. And that, that's when I actually started my own independent work. So I made a couple of short films. I did some uh, documentary work. I did some public service uh, ads and things uh, and other ad films, um, corporate films. Then when the kids were a little older, uh, there was this whole struggle to, you know, you write a, everybody does this. They write a feature film script and they think, you know, we're going to conquer Bollywood and they're going to go in and become the next big thing. Uh, and in the middle of that, this whole aberration came into my life, which is the corporate world. So I had the opportunity to uh, be part of a studio. And that was great because you get to see the other side of stuff. And that's really when a director and a writer gets to see how uh, real corporate setups, and I hope nobody gets offended by this, but how they actually control and uh, manipulate all the rights and all the advantages, uh, you know, trying to, to kind of, have a lot of the advantages over uh, writers or directors or even producers who really want that opportunity. So everyone's on the other side is very hungry and the corporates who have the funding and they have all the wherewithal to actually get a film off the floor, um, they use that to their advantage a lot. So luckily for me, because I came from an empathy, uh, you know, of being from that side of the fraternity, there was a lot of goodwill that I could create because I tried to be that bridge between people who really want that opportunity, but they also are the talent. So it's like, you know, the, the, the corporates have all the money and uh, the distribution and, you know, that all those advantages, but what they need is the content, is the creative talent that comes. Uh, you know, good scripts and, and competent directors to make it happen and really good producers who can make the project happen within that time, within that budget. So uh, that's really where, you know, my job that I was doing and it taught me a lot because it taught me contracts and it taught me to see how, um, you know, studios could kind of get away with, with taking a lot of the rights away from uh, independent people and unless they had really sharp lawyers to kind of counter that and finally it's all it all comes down to the negotiating table you know who can you know kind of hardball it more and so that uh, then you know showed me especially in in uh, our industry is is uh, evolving much slower i think this happened in the west much faster and jamshed might bear me out on that but uh, 
it happened abroad much earlier we were kind of getting on to this uh, really legal really corporate really professional uh, you know bus much later on and uh, even today you know there are a lot of youngsters who just want to do work and you know they don't and i've done it even after i came out of the corporate uh, world you're just so hungry and you're just so desperate to get that opportunity to do something and you're so grateful that someone's putting in money to do something that you a story you want to tell getting those actors on board and getting you that production that you don't even bother with contracts you don't bother with uh, you know retaining any kind of ip retaining any derivative rights retaining anything so you may even lose you might have created certain characters which then get uh, taken up into sequels or prequels or whatever and you have no right over them so these are you know all these lessons is what you learn uh, when when you're working in the industry vis-a-vis having a corporate background and even having a corporate background that didn't help me too much because i still was so hungry and desperate and and a lot of us are like this there are very few writer directors who even if they're very intelligent and they're very uh, savvy they still want to give away a lot of uh, you know ownership simply for that opportunity and but again you know that's that's negotiating in your own head what do you want to lose and what do you want to gain and then after a couple of projects i think you also become big enough to then say unless i have a contract i will not work or unless i get this much money i will not work or unless i retain these rights i will not work so that's currently where i am in my career and how did you take that experience uh, which you just spoke about you know and how did you apply it when you made your own film so that's what i didn't really apply it because i it was so you know and that happens with 90% of us or more maybe where uh, even if you're coming from a corporate background even if you know that certain things are fair so i would do it for other people and i still do it for other people there are youngsters whom i mentor or i advise or you know friends of mine who are who we, you know we're having discussions and they say are this opportunity has come up and i'll be like you know you know you get get these clauses in your contract and get this done and think about this and think ahead and it might uh, you know it might become so big that you might want to make a sequel so retain these rights i'll advise that to other people but when it comes to me i might kind of in my head say you know i can give this away because i'm getting something right now to be able to do it just completely i think depends uh, loita on how how much you feel at that point you're getting an advantage and how much long term you think it's going to help you so every particular project would be different you know i mean i think even the biggest of directors when they think that they're getting something big they might want to give it away maybe a lot of actors you know if i may just uh, just use this example a lot of actors are coming in as producers today so they might want to you know because of their star power they might want to uh you know take away a lot on the table where a director or a writer feels you know i can give this away because he or she is bringing so much more it's jo dikhta hai wo bikta hai you know what you see on the screen really because fans of that actor are coming on board so it it's completely every individual case so keeping that in mind uh, you know we'd still want to understand what were the issues you faced when it came to you know ip maybe not from your personal experience or what are the common issues that you feel writers and directors face when it comes to ip so they don't i think a lot of people are not aware even today of the fact that there are derivative rights you know there are there are things which uh, you make a film and there are characters you've written in and you've built up or there are situations or there are storylines that you've created which can become sequel or maybe just go into another so you make a film and it could become a mini series later on or a series which can uh, become a film so um where of uh, this kind of derivative that comes am i am i still audible yes Because you're i think there was an, uh, you yeah. know if you could elaborate what derivative rights are in you know just for our audience um, prequel sequel i think jamshed would be the you know we have these clauses yeah. which is yeah series or uh, characters with spin offs so for example one big example right now is kahani had a character called bob bishwas uh, the film kahani with with vidya balan and now bob bishwas is a completely new film you know they've they've taken that character and they made a film 
out of him or what we see all the time in avengers you know you see uh, a small character they just want to try it out for a bit or what happened with uh, black uh, black widow and which you know it became a, a film oh. or what happened with um, wonder vision which they took characters from the film and they just made like a series out of it so these are things which can or a book can happen so the reverse of maybe harry potter or when i was in viacom we actually got some really good scripts and we uh, tied them up with publications and they they uh, they made a book first that book became a best seller now those books the rights are taken and we make a movie out of it you know so these sure. are different things which one can do uh, jyoti tell us about your experience in licensing content and also uh, since you've been uh, you know buying a lot of scripts you're purchasing scripts and shall we call that script trading uh, you know how 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 does that really happen and also what are the rights that come into play um so i'm um, so for example i'm doing an anthology right now and i was looking for a particular theme so there are writers from the us and from canada who've written some very exciting short film scripts and uh, now they have no idea that somebody in india might find it interesting so i approach them and we negotiate over a certain amount of money and i take the rights to make it in india in indian languages for distribution on platforms that operate out of here and they still retain the rights of the original story so obviously when i take it for here i need to rewrite it in hindi or whatever i need to change the characters i need to change what is appeal to me is maybe a particular uh, concept and the storyline but it's just ethical to offer to pay for it and you know um, and and to take it then legally and and do it and they retain the rights on the original story and the original characters whereas i uh, own then the rights of whatever i have modified and then i also have the derivative rights of that so in case i want to make you know the short film works and i want to make a feature film out of it so i i kind of do that so these are uh, various things i'm also doing uh, picking up remake rights of films that exist and those are completely different so because again i'm making it here it's it's just that uh, that's going to be a remake rights assignment where i'm taking it for a certain territory in certain languages and i also will have derivative rights over the characters that i create for the indian films and they still retain the ip on their original stories so it's a it's a little bit of uh, it's it's sensitive uh, you know language and and the legalese in it but it just keeps things very clear and very you know everything is kind of out there so when you say that you have uh, act, you know you still retain the derivative rights does that mean that when you adapt it to local language maybe hindi whatever for india mm-hmm. uh, you can create new characters yes therefore yes okay. yes, yes. Oh, got it okay. and that's one of the clauses oh by the way thank you for this question because that that is one of the clauses that uh, whoever has bought either the purchase that script or has been assigned so the i'm the assignee uh, yeah i'm the assignee in that remake rights uh, we have the option and we have the freedom and we have the legal right to change and modify the original content so that's great cross pollination do you yeah. see this taking off as a trend or is this something that you're just you're no 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 i think everybody is doing it i mean also i think it helps that i'm also a writer director producer so i'm thinking also with all these hats on but uh, i'm sure everybody is doing it i mean they did it with uh, you know a lot of uh, for example shujoy did it i think with badla and he just flipped uh, you know it was a, a male protagonist he made it a female protagonist so there's all this people are just are, are doing it all the time yeah jamshed do you see any difference in ip practices between commercial movies and short films uh not not really i think uh, copyright see i think as jyoti very beautifully put it copyright is a bundle of rights so there are so many different types of rights uh, that are involved in it i mean she spoke about derivatives she spoke about you know residues so many other things so it's it's the copyright is in the film okay so we need to understand that it doesn't really matter whether it's a you know a, a two minute film or it's a feature film for whatever be the length so in in that uh, event uh, yes <laughs> the contracts may differ the contracts may have uh, you know uh, several uh, you know more or less uh, clauses but i think even if you, it's a it's a small you know snack video 
as as they call it uh, and and you you want someone to you know uh, produce it direct it write the script and uh, the the ip content part of it is pretty much the same so there is no real difference in, in uh, because the act at least as far as india is concerned it does not differentiate it says copyright in the film or a writer uh, uh, the, you know uh, uh, copyright uh, it, it, it it's it's the same it's uniform so there is no real difference in in, in that sense Right. Uh, my next question is for both of you, uh, but I'll start with Jyoti. What steps do you take to ensure your rights as a filmmaker? And uh, you know, you can elaborate that in terms of also because you're a writer, so you know you deal with producers, etc. So, what are the things that you should you know you take to ensure? And of course, Jamshed, if you have a legal point of view on that. So, first of all, I make sure there are two contracts. If I'm or three, if I'm also the producer. but it just it just makes sense and it's just cleaner to have you know your writer contract because those are completely different rights and and the remuneration and everything there is a director contract and then there is your you know if you're a co-producer on it then what are you going to get in terms of uh, sales and profits and um, you know first right of refusal maybe on on a sequel or any other derivative work that happens and in fact for first right of refusal is very important because uh, as a writer if i have written something and if you know some some other work is going to spin off from it uh, it just suddenly becomes big you you have an anticipated that you need to have that clause as a writer that you know uh, if if there's a derivative work that gets commissioned or is you know in the offing then i need to have first right of refusal in developing that content because it's come out of my head uh, as a director also then um, you know you want first right of refusal as a producer you want first right of refusal and then uh, there are different you know i mean the the really really savvy uh, writers will also kind of uh, bind their work to okay uh, i am writing this and this content will only be made into say a feature film or a series or uh, you know one season of this etc and you can't dilute it or you can't magnify it and take it into something else uh, you know then a director will also say okay you know i'm directing this feature and i want to be approached when you make it into a mini series or you make it into a television series or whatever or a writer can retain rights to make make that film into a book later on if they want to which is the opposite of what usually we find that a book is made into a film but there are lots of uh, you know lots of there are even today a lot of films which uh, get written as books later on so you know there's all these crossovers which happen so it just makes sense for a writer to be aware in terms of i mean there are things which we don't think of you know and when, even when we talk about licensing uh, you can you can license out your film as a producer to airlines you know to for a certain amount of time on certain sectors etc so there are so many so many different thin slicing of uh, sales that can happen over one content so suddenly people are telling me that they see my film on amazon and i had no idea it was on amazon i for all i only knew it was coming on youtube but since i'm not the producer i'm not bothered with it if i were the producer when i was the producer of a short film they had to literally sign a contract pay me a certain amount of money and for x number of years it was on their platform when that expires i can give it to another so and where it can be monetized jamshed what advice would you have for directors he's gone okay i want to uh, jamshed what advice would you have for directors and writers when it comes to deciding ip ownership in content across form- formats so uh, as we know at least as far as the indian copyright act is concerned the writer has a very specific uh, you know uh, first authorship uh, ownership in in copyright and then as you know the 2012 amendment to the act once uh, it's it's made even more secure uh, in the sense that you you don't give up your your first authorship right come what may well, in the earlier regime what used to happen is that even for 1 rupee you could have handed over every you know aspect of your copyright to to a producer etc in, in this case you first ownership always remains with you come what may so that that's been the huge change in the act uh, we we follow the french system now uh, 
as far as a director is concerned, usually a director is a person who is, uh, you know, who is an employed for hire. It's a contract for service. So even in, under the, the Copyrights Act, and this is not only in India, but even outside of India, he really doesn't have, uh, you know, a fundamental, if I may use the word, copyright. But he could get, you know, additional rights from, from some other, you know, contractual agreements that that he, he has. Uh, for example, because he is the one uh, who's going to give the, you know, the last okay, you know, apart from the, the producer saying that, you know, everything, and then Dhoti can certainly add on to this, that finally when the product is, is ready, the film is ready, it's the director who says, yes, now I'm satisfied. And then of course the producer, uh, uh, because the producer has, again, his own copyright. The film is owned ultimately by the producer. So these are the, the three, and I think it's, you know, perhaps the time has come to, you know, relook at the director's perspective and you know whether he can get a uh, sort of uh, a, a part of the the pie officially <laughs> in a copyright and not in a sort of a convoluted way uh, as is happens now so most of the uh, the aspects again uh, the, the copyright and the, the relegation of rights happens through a contract and and that that's very important and i think as Jyoti very rightly said, it's the, it's a matter of negotiation. This is not only Absolutely. within India, it's international as well. So how you negotiate yourself uh, with uh, the, the producer or with with you know with, with distributors, with studios, and you know things like that, that will actually ensure uh, you, you know your uh, uh, how you can protect your IP. I mean, you what can still. He- Sorry. Jamshed, I, you know, we, we, you spoke about contracts and there were very practical aspects that Jyoti uh, spoke about. What are the key elements in a contract? Because I'm sure for a young writer, someone who gets into this industry, he would have not even seen a contract. And yeah. then contracts run into pages. And I'm yeah. sure they would have their own legal, uh, you know. Sure. I'll, I'll tell you. I mean, this is something that we learned probably in the first year of law. But we'll, I'll, I'll be happy to go through it. <laughs> so essentially, a contract is, you know, Two parties competent to contract. That means you have to be of uh, you know particular age. You, you also have to be you know mentally sound. Very interesting part of the Indian Contract Act. And and there should be somebody has to make a a, a, a promise that is offer and acceptance. And then that ultimately yes, monetary or some form of consideration also has to be there to constitute a, a contract. So, so th- these, uh, you know, important aspects are there in every single contract for it to constitute a contract. Because sometimes you could, it could be an offer and acceptance full stop. And if it is gratuitous, then it is not a contract. So, so, so things like that. So, and typically a contract would read, uh, and I'll very quickly run through it. You'll have uh, initially the, uh, the names and the addresses uh, of, of the parties, then you'll have clauses which start with the word whereas, which are called recital clauses, which essentially, you know, explain how the two parties have come together and why they are entering into a contract. And then you have the different terms of the contract, where it says who, uh, it, it clearly defines who each party is, what is their role, their responsibilities, their liabilities. And then you have, you know, several clauses uh, only on 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 rights, uh, followed by the the payment schedules and you know other other things like that, and then of course the jurisdictions, the court system, whether you have uh, mediation, arbitration, and you know things like that, and and it has to be executed, uh, you know, signed by both parties, and ideally there should be witnesses to the contract. So this is what a typical contract. And the indemnities. <laughs> Of course. Of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So what is an indemnity? We're making it very basic here. So what, what is an indemnity and how does it really protect? No, so again, it depends on which, for example, uh, you know, a, a producer would uh, take an indemnity from a writer, say, 
uh, on the originality of of the work okay so so he would say that uh, you've come to me with an which you say is an original script but tomorrow uh, say x or y comes and says you know what this is actually not uh, so and so it is it is my uh, uh, script i have written it in this particular way i have you know got it copyrighted with the uh, you know the copyright board of this uh, society or whatever and and here this is the proof so in uh, and in case of litigation say by a third party what the producer would do is say that in case there is a litigation then i would have have to be protected not only in court but even monetarily in case somebody a third party sues so that's the one of the examples of in indemnity got it uh, jyoti you've had short films release on youtube Yeah. uh and uh, so in your experience did you have any uh, experience with regard to piracy especially since it's a very public platform and what has been your experience uh, you know on on a platform like this and you know today we have multiple platforms you have short format platforms uh, you know you have audio video platforms so you know your views on that uh, you know with regard to short films so you can't stop piracy you really can't and uh, many many years ago i heard a, another director say that i don't care if my film is pirated i just want a lot of people to watch my film now that's a very scandalous and a very uh, you know triggering kind of thing to say but um, i think for a, a lot of uh, directors they just happy for their film to get seen now when you when a director is also a producer then it becomes this you know uh, you know you're kind of shuffling between uh, getting angry that someone's robbing stealing from you and on the other hand your audience has increased because they are you know torrenting your film or sharing it on telegram or wherever so um, yeah it's kind of it's it's uh, it's a very very tricky situation it's completely illegal to uh, to you know a pirate a film completely because a lot of hard work and a lot of money goes into making a film and then to do out a producer or someone who's put in money to make that film out of what their uh, right is you know to get to get a revenue earning out of it is like is just is just criminal it's illegal uh, so yeah but there's i don't know what one can do i mean for short films i don't know what one can do but i don't know how much short films also get pirated because short films because they're just so a lot of times uh, you know uh, long format films or feature format films or series can get pirated because people don't have the bandwidth or they haven't subscribed to a particular channel etc so for them it's like you know share your password or share the link or stuff like this and i'm i'm being very you know brutal about it but for short films especially if they're on youtube so uh, chutney was on the large short films platform which is a free platform so they you know there are they inviting uh, audiences to come and you know kind of snack that 15 18 20 minute content and uh, plus minus the other film was on bhuvan bams uh, and we in fact had an offer from one of the leading uh, you know short film platforms giving us so much money because they wanted our film to be on it they were commissioning it even before we made the film but bhuvan uh, was very keen that his audience which is has been used to having free content and he was streaming free content and he was making money from his advertising etc or all the sponsorships he was getting he was very keen that his audience would not have to pay for a short film that he stars in so that again is the scruples that uh you know uh, yeah that's a certain entity yeah. yeah so so he was so if it's free i think people don't really you know I, i don't think they would there's nothing in it for them to kind of pirate a lot of people would pirate if a film is you know they say we're exclusively only on a certain channel and then they can't afford to subscribe that's when it gets pirated so uh, and again that is a producers so if i if i were the producer i'd get really triggered by that and i'd get really angry about it as a director you know when people say oh we saw your film i'm not even asking them where did you see it and did you pay to see it i'm just happy to get all the you know kudos that they like the film so yeah. 
Uh, Jyoti, have you seen any short film which probably had a very, uh, you know, limited release? Maybe it's on YouTube, it just got released, but then later it finds uh, probably a place in a compilation of shorts because we see a lot of online platforms today uh, mm-hmm. are optimizing and monetizing short films, you know, through series. Yeah. They're called shorts. So have yeah, you- and anthologies or, or exactly. Stuff. I mean, I understand from a piracy perspective, and from you know, maybe a director doesn't choose to monetize, so it's okay to see it free. But yeah, today, yeah. it's become a very serious uh, business model where people also are addicted to more short form films. So, have you seen any th- come across any such mm, example? No, I don't. I I don't think that would happen. Also, because I know the way that OTT platforms work. And yes. what what really works for them is uh, the novelty of a film. So they, you know, something that's been seen before to kind of uh, include it in an anthology is not at all, uh, you know, it's not, uh, what is the word for it? They're not excited by it. They so wouldn't be. Yeah, it has to be something which is original, which, uh, you know, which no one has seen before. It's a fresh, yeah, so the freshness of it is what's really appealing uh, to the OTT platform. So would you say for somebody who wants to put his short film out there, that person should actually wait, see if it yes. can be exploited on a platform yes. and then yes. before exploring a free format like YouTube? Yes, yes. Okay. Unless and, unless that's their, sorry, but unless that's their calling card in terms of a showreel, you know, they say, this is, you know, I, I've made a film and now I'm putting it out and I have a, I have other ideas and other concepts which are there in the pipeline but um, you know if if this gathers a lot of views then that becomes his or her calling card with with platforms saying ki look i'm you know i'm this good that i make stuff like this and lots of people there's a lot of traffic and so would you want to give me more films to do that right i mean that's one way of going about it Jamshed, what are your views on, uh, you know, uh, online infringement, especially when we are, you know, in a digital age today? What, in your opinion, what are the loopholes in law uh, enforcement and, you know, your observations on this? So this takes me to a very interesting, uh, it's a few years ago that we had fought where, uh, you know, there was a, a recording of a, a particular interview in, in an event that had taken place in, uh, and that was going to be used for a particular series, which was going to be then put up on, uh, on a platform. And what was very interesting was that the, you know, uh, the, the people, I mean, uh, who came, you know, to watch it, they were told specifically that, you know, please switch off your phones and, you know, no cameras and this is going to be shot for a particular purpose and uh, things like that. And, uh, you know, a few weeks later, somebody from that uh, organization actually found that the entire, you know, sort of interview of of a very uh, well-known, you know, producer uh, was uh, was just, just put up. Uh, you know, and uh, I mean, they were really, uh, you know, in the, they were tearing their hair because they said, you know, this is our first show and, you know, this is something that has happened. So what was very, uh, was um, I mean, amusing uh, was the fact that that uh, in within, you know, I think minutes or within hours, they were able to, you know, uh, transfer that to uh, a URL which was based in a uh, in another country, and uh, you know when we had we went to court and you know then got a John Doe order against uh, uh, that uh, particular uh, you know URL and you know then getting addresses and you know finding out where it is and you know it's and then yeah, in those days you had other sort of uh, agencies and platforms coming and saying, no, 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 it, it's not us, it's somebody else, etc. So the, the enforcement of uh, an infringement, it, it takes time. I mean, the, the, the net moves so fast that, you know, it, it, it goes within sort of minutes uh, across and it can be, you know, the, uh, distributed on a, a free platform somewhere, uh, uh, you know, causing, you know, enormous loss to, uh, to, to the, uh, you know, even before it's formally produced. And, and that was something that, you know, we were very, very concerned about. And of course, uh, the Bombay High Court had uh, granted an injunction. And then, of course, 
we we got it off finally and you know things like that but i think that that's a that that is an issue that uh, see the, the the main problem is that today we do not have an international court okay we, we must have internet i mean the problem is copyright then becomes jurisdictional so you have to approach yeah. the the court of that particular jurisdiction or what is jurisdiction jurisdiction is can arise even where the viewer watches it i mean if i put something on youtube and somebody watches it in in, in another country that court also has jurisdiction that's that's the problem and i think we need a little bit of you know sort of maybe that the time has come to have a you know an international court looking at these where where decisions can happen very very quickly i mean that that's that's a, a suggestion but as i think uh, somebody very rightly said piracy is a huge problem it will always remain a problem yeah yeah there was this time where uh, films used to release in the middle east on thursdays and they used to release in india so hindi films used to release in india on fridays and Uh, they still do when when the theaters will open and we used to find that the films would leak on on thursday night or friday morning they'd be out and you know leak copies of uh, pirated copies of the film on on cd's or dvd's and it's scandalous and shocking but uh, that's the truth that is to happen all the time so yeah this has been an extremely interesting discussion a lot of insights thank you so much jyoti thank you jamshed uh, for your time thank with you. us and uh, for sharing this forum with us have a lovely evening thank you